Welcome to Less Lethal Defense, your one-stop shop for less lethal product reviews. My name is Seth, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Pepperball Lifelight Mobile, or just the mobile. Pepperball came onto the scene in 1998, and over the course of 20 years, their products have been used by over 10,000 law enforcement agencies throughout the country and the military. They're based out of Lake Forest, Illinois, so that means it's American made. You might be asking yourself, what is a pepper ball? Pepper balls are similar to paintballs. Paintballs are made of a biodegradable material filled with a water-based paint. Pepper balls, on the other hand, are made of a pharmaceutical grade plastic and filled with a PAVA powder. What is PAVA? PAVA is one of the hottest of the six capsinoids found in pepper plants which really just means it's pepper spray in a powder format. These pepper balls can be stored at negative 50 all the way up to 150 degrees and still maintain their excellent quality. Your pepper ball mobile kit will come with six live rounds and 12 inert rounds. The inert rounds are just like the live rounds, except they're filled with baby powder and are there for practice. They're non-harmful, so go ahead and use them all up. It also comes with three eight ounce CO2 cartridges. These CO2 cartridges should not be kept in a temperature exceeding 125 degrees. Keep that in mind because that's important later. Let's get to the launcher. This is the Pepperball Mobile. Kind of looks like a flashlight, doesn't it? Because it is a flashlight. The flashlight has three different settings. The, the primary beam, a slow strobe, and a fast strobe. Strobes are really great because they can disorientate a possible attacker. What Pepperball has done is incorporated a flashlight and a Pepperball launcher all in one, which is really great because it's hidden in plain sight. It has this really great little lanyard on the end you can secure to your wrist, not going anywhere. And let's just say you're out, you're on your phone, you're distracted and you see what could be a possible threat, bam you're ready to go. Except don't do that. I did it because it looked cool. I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of fun. But if this is a true self-defense type situation, you're, you're gonna be stressed and you don't wanna be playing around. This isn't a toy. If you have it hanging off the lanyard, use your other hand, bring it to your hand and get a good grip. That being said, it is a flashlight. So you will be using it like a flashlight. You'll be walking one-handed, you may have it at your waist. Um, you may not even have it on, you may just have it hanging around your wrist. How do you aim it? Are you gonna bring it up to your face like this? No. Pepperball thought about that. And that's why there is a laser. The laser is really great because it allows you to fire it from your hip or with one hand and you can maintain your sight picture, which is the laser. The laser is also adjustable. So if you're out shooting those practice inert rounds and you notice that it's not really on target, you can use an Allen wrench and simply adjust it. The laser also has another factor to it. Behind lasers tend to be weapons, guns, tasers, in this case, a pepper ball launcher. So if you have a possible threat out there and they see this laser, they might just back down. You add that, to the strobe, they have no idea what they're looking at. It could be a gun, it could be a taser. In this case, it's the Pepperball launcher. <laughs> so that's another really great feature about this. The laser is con laser and light are both operated by three AAA batteries, which Pepperball has included. In the event that the batteries do die, the Pepperball launcher will still work because it is operated by the CO2 cartridge. The batteries just control the light and laser. Now it will be harder to aim. It'll be really hard to aim because you would have to bring it up to your face to kind of get a good sight picture. That being said, this is really not a daytime device. You can definitely use it during the daytime, but with my experience with lasers is they tend to get washed out in daylight. So this is more meant for evening and nighttime or just pitch black, uh, indoor or outdoor use, definitely. 
but not during the day. Also, um, there are some things that could cause red flags. People may notice the big red button on the top. Uh, not to say that that would necessarily tell someone that this is more than just a flashlight, but it potentially could. But it's a flashlight, so it's meant to be used at night. Now behind me, I have a mag light. This is just a standard uh, mag light. It takes two D batteries, and you can tell that it's actually shorter. Um, the, the pepper ball launcher is shorter than the mag light. And I weighed them. The launcher is actually lighter than this mag light. I would definitely want this light over the mag light. Let's get a little closer to the mobile. On top here, you can see the trigger. Below that, you have your safe and fire switch. You simply slide the switch to the fire position and it will activate the laser and allow you to depress the trigger. On the front, you have your internal air source. You can see a picture of a CO2 canister on it. It has this handy little loop to help you unscrew it. Now, I've already done that, so it's easier to come out. It takes a little bit of time. You can see the red here is your internal O-ring, which allows for the pressure to stay inside of the launcher once it's been punctured, and then the spring, which keeps it snug in position. Simply just apply a little bit of pressure, not too much, and then you just twist using the handy little loop. Once it is flush and back into position, uh, which it's not, uh, it's gonna take some time, so I'm gonna avoid that. Uh, the loop actually sits flush with the plug. Now you can see the two dual flashlights and then the laser right here, which sits right next to the launch chamber, which is essentially your barrel. Below that is your internal uh, uh, access port. Just simply twist this, and this is where your pepper balls are going to go. Twist and pull. You would add your pepper balls here. Slide this back down. Twist, and it's locked into position. On this side, you have your uh, flashlight button. Down here, you actually have the adjustments for the laser. So one will control the up and down, and one will control the left and right. On the back, you can see the lanyard better. It does have a button that does lock it in place, so it will not move. Back on top, we've got our trigger again. The Pepper Ball Mobile is easy to operate once you have your CO2 cartridge and Pepper Balls loaded. You simply take it off of safe, apply pressure to the trigger, and it will fire. Now your first shot, you will have to apply the harder pressure because you are puncturing the CO2 cartridge, but the follow-up shots will be very easy. Please be mindful of where you're storing your Pepper Ball Mobile. You don't want it to fall into the hands of a child or someone who doesn't know how to use it. If you're in doubt, remove the CO2 cartridge and the pepper balls, which will render this inoperable. It still will have the light and laser. Keep in mind that lasers can be dangerous, so I would highly recommend that you store this in a safe location that's easily accessible to you and only you. I think we've done enough talking about the Pepper Ball Mobile. Let's see what this thing can do. The Pepperball Mobile has dual LED flashlights in the front with a lumen power of 350. This flashlight is an Orlite i3e and it has 90 lumens. It takes one AAA battery. This is the Pelican 7060 tactical flashlight. It emits 535 lumens. Now you can tell the difference between lumen strength from the 90 lumens of the Olite, which is something you keep on your key ring, to the 535 lumen power Pelican, which is more like what you would find a police officer carrying or something that someone would keep in their car. But the advantages to the Pepper Ball is that you do have a decent lumen strength at 350 and you have the strobe features. It has the low strobe and the high strobe, which can distract and deter your potential attacker. Hello everyone. 
you might be wondering why I'm wearing a mask. Well, it's because I'm in an active paintball arena called Extreme Velocity in Salem, Oregon. I'm here to test the velocity of my Pepperball Mobile. They have professional chronographs here. You can see those down in the red. And I'll be able to test exactly what speeds the Pepperball Mobile is actually firing the Pepperballs out at. Now for this indoor range, their velocity requirements at a max is 250. So anything above that is classified as unsafe at this particular location. However, at outdoor locations, it can be up to 300 feet per second. So we'll see what that ends up turning out to be with the mobile. According to Pepperball, the Pepperball mobile is able to fire at 250 feet per second. You can see from this image that the very first shot was 269 feet per second, which is a lot higher than their advertised uh, standard rating. The second shot is 237 feet per second. So we've seen a big drop between the first and second shot. The third shot is 227 feet per second. Now, I think the discrepancy between the first and second shot was because I reset the chronograph and set my camera to record, which allowed some of the uh, CO2 to exit from the launcher. I'd like to remind you that extreme velocity does not allow markers that fire higher than 250. So if I were to use the Peppermall Mobile as a paintball marker, which I wouldn't do, I would actually be barred from playing at extreme velocity because uh, it's too much power. And I just point that out because this little guy has a lot of power behind it. Hello everyone, I am out here with the Pepperwell Mobile Light and we are doing the demonstration. So we are going to do some practice shots with it before we get on to the live shots. We'll be using the inert rounds. These are the purple ones. They have baby powder in them. The red ones, these are the live ones. Those are the ones that actually have the pepper powder in them and will affect. So we're going to do some testing and then we'll get to the live stuff. Adam is going to be test firing at 30 feet with the inert rounds, which are just the baby powder, so he can get an idea on the accuracy. You can see the two small holes here are the ones that Adam just fired in succession. These two up here were done earlier, so this is his accuracy. The circle here is to represent where I would be standing, so this is actually a pretty good grouping from that distance. Mm -hmm. For the live demonstration, Adam will be operating the Pepper Bomb Mobile while I'll be the attacker. I will stand in front of Adam and he will fire the first pepper ball at me. Ideally, Adam would give me verbal warnings and giving me orders to stay back. But for this demonstration, he will not be. Once he has fired his first pepper ball, that will allow me to start moving towards him. To be somewhat realistic, your attacker is not going to stand still. So neither am I. I'm going to walk directly for him. Now, since he's only fired a couple practice rounds, I'm not going to zig and zag because your potential attacker may not know what you're using and may not even comprehend what has hit them. So I'm just going to walk straight. Once I start walking, Adam is authorized to fire as many of the remaining two pepper balls he has. The idea is to see how many of the pepper balls it will take to stop me the threat before I reach him and how far of a distance I can travel after being shot the first time. Hopefully this demonstration will show the effectiveness of the Pepperball Mobile. We are now ready to do the live demonstration. Please do not try this at home. I'm wearing glasses just in case one of these rounds were to happen to hit me in the eye. It is a safety issue. It will not affect the powder because the powder will still be able to go into my lungs and my nose, not to mention the pain compliance. I am just wearing a standard sweatshirt, zip up sweatshirt and a t-shirt. No extra padding. This is what you would wear. It's about 38 degrees here, so this is comfortable for me. Oh. 
So we shot the first uh, ball and unfortunately it did not break. We changed out the CO2 with a fresh CO2 cartridge and we're gonna try again. All right, so we were able to get two shots off and I definitely stopped. Um, both uh, rounds did break right in my abdomen. Uh, Adam did a great shot with that. I started here and I was able to get approximately eight feet before I just couldn't take it. I was overcome by the pain. The pain was immediate. It did take a second for the pepper uh, powder to get into my lungs and Adam is even now exposed to it because it does have that 15 foot radius. You can see over here, this is one of the pepper balls. It did break, there is still some powder inside of it, but it still is in the air pretty thick. I don't know where the other one went, but this definitely was a successful demonstration. The second test is going to be on just a powder by itself. So one of the benefits of the Pepperball Launcher Mobile is that you actually can shoot around the attacker even if you don't have a clear sight and the pepper powder is going to disperse in that 15 feet of radiance. So what Adam is going to do is he's going to shoot at this piece of wood and then I'm going to go through it. So you're really going to see the powder in action. When you're ready. All right, everyone, you can tell from me walking through the cloud that I was absolutely crippled. Unfortunately, so is Adam. He uh, walked close to grab my camera and was exposed to some of the residual powder. <coughs> it's only been about three minutes um, since I walked through the powder and you can see that <coughs> I'm still coughing pretty heavily. Um, my nose is burning, my tongue is burning. Uh, my eyes are okay. Um, I honestly can't tell you if I close my eyes when I walk through it or not, but um, that's just that's a, one of the factors that we have here. Overall, if I was trying to attack someone, I wouldn't have continued. I was debilitated. Now, this is not an offensive weapon, so... Adam could have easily retreated to a safe distance, gotten to his car, gotten inside of his house, called 911 while the attacker is debilitated and possibly fleeing. So you could tell that, like I said, I, the minute I walked right in front of the, uh, the powder, which was three shots, I was, I was done. Just coughing and hacking. You do have to be aware of the residual as well. Adam was 30 feet away. And yes, he did get closer to me. So the, the closer you are to the powder, the more chances you will be exposed. Now this device does allow you to shoot from a farther distance. So you don't have to be as close and you're less likely to get any the residual. That's one of the bonuses of using a pepper product, pepper ball product versus a pepper spray where you do have to have close proximity. I hope you enjoyed the live demonstration. I know I didn't and I have the bruises to prove it. I did learn a lot of really good information. 
You may have noticed that I wasn't filmed shooting the Pepperball Mobile. I did in fact take several practice shots and when I was out testing the velocity, I took several practice shots then. Now I'm gonna give an opportunity for Adam to give a quick summary. Remember that this is the first time Adam has ever seen or fired a Pepperball launcher. So he has zero experience with it. He has not been coached, paid. He simply volunteered because he knew what he was going to be able to do to me. <laughs> Friends, right? Let's see what he has to say. So this is my Pepperball operator, Adam. Thank you for helping out today. So can you tell me what your impressions of the Pepperball light are? How is it to operate? Uh, it was easy to operate. Uh, the flashlight has three different settings. Uh, the laser comes on when you take the safety off, so you know that's in fire mode. And when you put the safety back on, the laser turns off. Um, the initial push to fire the uh, pepper ball was a bit um, harder than the following ones. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty comfortable. Um, I could see myself, you know, going for a walk with my my family and taking this with me and using it as a flashlight and just having that extra security of the um, pepper ball um, option with it. How was it aiming? Did you feel that it was easy to do one-handed or was it better to do use two hands? Uh, two-handed, definitely. One-handed, you kind of get trying to push that down, especially on that first initial shot, trying to puncture the CO2 cartridge. That was difficult to do. So holding it with two hands, I definitely felt um, more comfortable and sure of what I was doing. So overall, Adam, uh, do you like this product? Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was very cool. Uh, I've never seen anything like it before. And do you have any experience with anything like this before? No, I do not. I've shot in hand. I've shot handguns before, but other than that, nothing ever like this. Awesome. Well, thank you again for helping out, Adam. You're welcome. I'd like to talk about a couple things that happened during the live demonstration. First off was that very first pepper ball that was shot at me. Yes, it did hit me. Unfortunately, it did not break. It did hurt a lot and it did bruise. Um, I believe it didn't break because of the CO2 cartridge. We had been firing a lot of practice rounds. And before starting the uh, live demonstration, I did not replace the CO2 cartridge, which is exactly what Pepperball recommends. Uh, you should only be using one cartridge for uh, the inert rounds while you're practicing. You should never continue to use a, a spent cartridge. And if you recall, from the velocity portion, you can see that the velocity was going down every time I pushed the trigger. So I don't think it had enough velocity and that's why it didn't break. Now for the second demonstration, when I was shot the first time, I did start walking towards Adam um, and I did walk off screen and you didn't see me get hit with the second ball. Uh, it did break um, and I was very overcome with the powder. Uh, I the powder actually caused me to walk backwards because I was trying to get away from it. It was very difficult for me to actually get back to the camera, but I did really want you to see the impacts. Now with the impacts, you may have noticed they were a little low on my body. That was done intentionally for safety. I was wearing uh, the safety glasses just in case Adam hit me in the eye. I didn't want to really wear a paintball mask because I didn't want to obstruct the, uh, any of the powder and I wanted you to be able to see my facial expressions, but I wasn't willing to get hit in the eye. So I did have Adam aim a little bit lower because in the event that he would have hit me in the face or the neck, it could have done some serious injury to me. So uh, he did aim lower, but Pepperball recommends that you fire in the chest. Um, however, anywhere you hit, the powder is going to spread so it's, it's not as critical that you hit. And even um, with when I, the powder was fired around me, you can tell that you don't actually need a, a direct contact, but the direct contact does help with the pain compliance, which it, it, it hurts a lot. One of the things I was really surprised about was how the powder did not actually affect my eyes. Um, you could have said that the, the first demonstration with me getting shot at. It could have just been a fluke because it was lower on my body, which could have possibly been a factor. But when 
we fired into the board and I walked through it. Now I did say I could have closed my eyes, but I was so close to the powder that it still could have gotten in my eyes. However, I never had redness, um, inability to see, or even um, uh, crying, which is something that can definitely happen. Adam didn't get close enough to the powder to have any of that exposure. He did get uh, it into his lungs and you could hear him coughing in the background. Um, obviously I did not need my vision to be gone, to be incapacitated because you could see I was almost having these, this mini seizure, um, trying to maintain my breathing. It's time for the final review and rating of the Pepperball Mobile. I'd like to talk about the features about the Pepperball Mobile that I enjoyed the most. The fact that it can be fired from 60 feet away is outstanding. Being able to maintain a good distance from a possible attacker is ideal. Also, maintaining its velocity. The fact that it can shoot at 250 feet per second or higher off an 8-ounce CO2 cartridge is amazing. Uh, you saw from the testing that it does fluctuate, but it's still a really good feet per second. Next is the laser. A lot of products do have lasers, but they're not adjustable. The mobile's laser is completely adjustable. So when you're out testing it with your uh, inert rounds and you notice the laser is off, you can fully adjust it. Next is the materials and manufacturing. Uh, the Pepperball mobile is made from just superior materials and is quality. Even the little lanyard is strong and durable. I actually believe that in the event you had to, you could use this as a striking device and it's not going to break. Now, of course, that's a last ditch resort, but it's possible. There is a little metal uh, lip around the front of uh, the mobile, which allows you to sit it flush against a hard surface and it won't interfere with any of the key components of the front. The ergonomics, this really does beat a flashlight because of the way it's designed. It does allow you to have a good solid grip and then operate the light with your index finger and the trigger and safety switch with your thumb. The ergonomics are really good. Something I didn't mention before was the fact that the Pepperball Mobile can also be used against animals, whether they be domestic or wild. If you come across an aggressive animal, you can simply fire the Pepperball Mobile uh, near the animal and allow the powder to overcome them, or you can fire directly at the animal. Now, this is not designed specifically for animals, but it is an option in the event that you come across one. Finally, is what is included with your Pepperball Mobile. With all the inert rounds, the three CO2 cartridges, um, your batteries, uh, the live rounds, you don't have to worry about purchasing anything extra. You simply just buy the, the package and everything comes with it. A Pepperball really did a good job of including everything you might need. There are several features of the Pepperball Mobile that I did not like. The trigger was one. You had to apply a lot of pressure when puncturing the CO2 cartridge. This was not easily done with one hand. Also, if you do not have strong enough hands or a medical condition, it can be very difficult or impossible in some situations. And if you're not able to puncture the CO2 cartridge, this entire device is rendered useless. The other was the flashlight and the strobe. I expected the flashlight to be a little bit stronger and the, it might not have been as strong because it is run off of three AAA batteries, but the strobes did underwhelm me. I expected them to be a little bit stronger and uh, a little bit faster and each setting just did not um, satisfy me that they were gonna be strong enough or fast enough to really deter a threat. Also, since you did have to rotate through them every time you turned on and off the light, that was a little bit of an annoyance because if you're just simply using this to um, search a dark area or um, light your way, having to switch through those um, strobes just is problematic. The last is the fact that this is only usable really in low light or night circumstances. Now, this is a great product for that, but it's rendered completely useless during the day because you can't see the laser. So this is limited really to evening and night situations. And for an overall product, I want to be able to use it uh, 24 hours a day, whether it be daytime or night. 
And unfortunately, the Powerball Mobile just is not a good choice for daytime use. I will be rating each and every product with a 1 to 10 scale. 1 being the worst and 10 being the best. 10 will be reserved for products that exceed my expectations, that I'm willing to put my name and reputation behind. These are products that I would carry and I would recommend that anyone I care about carries. Ones will be reserved for trash products that I will throw away. If it was given to me, I would give it back. These products are not going to be effective, are not useful, and are quite dangerous. Five will be reserved for products that are kind of in between. They have their pros and their cons. I will rank each product between this and I will explain why it got that ranking. Now that I've collected all of the data on the Pepperball Lifelight Mobile, I have decided to give it a rating of 6.5 out of 10. I would have liked to have given it a higher rating, but because of the hard trigger press and the fact that you can only really use it at night, it got a lower rating. If you're looking for a product to use during the daytime, this is not the right product for you. But if you believe you have enough strength to apply the right amount of pressure to the trigger and you're looking for something to use during the night, this is the right product for you. You can purchase this product at Pepperball's website, which I have linked in the description below. If you live in California, they also have a California compliant Pepperball Mobile. I hope you enjoyed my review. If you did, hit the like button. If you want to see more reviews, hit the subscribe button and make sure notifications are turned on so you'll get an up-to-date notification when I post the next review. You can also follow me on TikTok and Instagram. If you have any questions, comments, or there's a product you'd like to see me review, please send me an email. And until next time, stay safe.